this is day six of uh, the daily tutorial about uh, coloring a page from Secret Garden and uh, I did a little bit of homework maybe you did that too I added more blues to the background and I added also on some places some warmer tones maybe you can see it is over here I felt I wanted a little bit of yellow. I will show you which color that was later. And uh, while looking at the results so far, I, I also see some things that I need to fix. It's not necessarily wrong what I did, but the drawing will eventually be look stronger when I uh, change some things and for example it is over here the transition from yellow to the blue um, is it happens over here the transition and it follows this branch and over here the same thing happens the transition follows the shape of the butterfly and that is not so strong because the background has nothing to do with this butterfly or the shape of this branch so in order to make the the background look more really like a background I will change this area a little bit I'm not sure exactly how I will do that but I will add colors so that I, it doesn't look like the butterfly and this branch or some sort of border for the yellow and the blue area Now this is the area where I added a little bit of very light yellow and this is the color that I used, cream, from the Polychromos series. And I just did it like this, just a very light touch, adding the yellow on the areas where there is no, not much color yet. Because I color with this light touch and and I'm not uh, trying to cover everything, there are white spots left on the paper. And I'm just adding a little bit of this very light yellow on these uh, spots. This is just the first layer of yellow and I'm... I don't know really what the outcome will be. This is just, well, it's it's going to be a surprise what the results uh, eventually will be. I like that uh, element of surprise when coloring. So I do not try to uh, to decide on all the colors and and things on forehand, I just let it happen. Now in the left top corner there is also a nice little spot here near, near the butterfly. Let's see what happens if we add a little bit of yellow to it. Now be careful with adding yellow to blue areas because yellow and blue together can make green unless you want green in your background that is a uh, well when you want green in your background that is no problem of course but if you want a blue sky with some warmer highlights you should you need to be very careful that you do not blend those colors together too much and turn your background into a green one Today I am going to 
add a little bit more color to some leaves and I am starting with these three and I decided to put a little bit of dark chrome yellow to them. This color is something in between orange and yellow. To me it looks more like orange than yellow. And I'm using this color to add a little bit of warmth to these leaves. And I'm doing that because I know um, warm colors make a beautiful contrast with the background. And you can see it with these yellow leaves. They really pop out of the blue background. So I'm adding a little bit of yellow, of, um, yeah, yellow, yeah, dark chrome yellow. I would have called it light orange, but it is being named after um, the pigment that is in it. And in this case, there's chromium in it. Now, chromium is a toxic uh, material. So don't eat your pencils. Okay, now when you compare these leaves with these, you can see the difference. And I again uh, colored with a very light touch, so there will be more layers of green and maybe also yellows and oranges on top of what I just colored. But this warm element to the color is definitely going to help to let the leaves um, stand out from the background. So I will do that with these ones as well. I always tend to color the same shaped leaves with the same colors. So these, in my opinion, these are the same species as these. So I would give them the same colors. And this species is always also over here. And now there's this thing because the background here I will show you a little bit better. The background is a warm orange. So if I would add too much of a warm color in those leaves, I would get the opposite of what I get here. So I leave these leaves for now and I will not add this yellow to them. I will do that over here though. Because in this leaf I can make the contrast with the background again. And over here I will give a little bit as well, although there is warmth in the background, but the background is so light over here. And although I'm not sure if it will stay that way, I will add a little bit of color to it. And this one too. And 
going back to the leaves here I will not add it over here but I will add a little bit here and in the tip of this one now it could well be that I will in the end give this one this this color um, too but I will leave it for now now these leaves I need to make a decision about um, what to do with them and for some reason my in instinct my intuition tells me to start with gray My intuition is telling me that the inside, the center of these leaves, need to have a little bit of gray. So I, taking this one, the warm gray number two, and I'm adding just a little touch of gray to them. Now it is so light that I can add any color I want to it. Maybe you hardly see um, the color. Now I'm adding a little bit darker tone. This is from uh, the Brownsville set, warm gray. It is slightly light, uh, darker than the one I just used. Look. Now you also may have warm grays and cool grays or cold grays in your pencil set and I am making the decision now to use only the warm grays because the background here is cool so I want to make contrast with warmer tones in the forefront and cooler in the background and although the difference may uh, it may not be so uh, very good to see this can be a great if, if I would color this with cooler grays the center of the leaves would blend into the background more, a lot more and that's not what I want. I am now going to add a very light touch of grass green. Just a very light touch. So far, so good. I like it. Okay. Now there are more leaves like this. They are over here as well. But I will do them um, as my homework. So maybe you can do that too. And now let's see if we can do something with uh, some flowers. Flowers are not my uh, my best. Um, how do you say that? I find flowers difficult to draw, to color, not to draw but to color. I uh, told you in uh, one of my other videos that um, I tend to put too much color on the flowers 
and they will lose their translucency, translucency, yeah, something like that. Flowers always look very um, delicate, but I tend to um, um, to make to 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 put the wrong colors and too much colors on them, and they will lose that delicacy. So, but that's uh, that's also uh, just about practicing and experimenting. So. I'm going to uh, start with this one. I always like to color after nature and I think I do not do that only because I think nature is beautiful, but I also do that, I think, because it gives me um, some grip on the situation and it gives me the direction where to go. So in this case, when I look at this flower, I don't know what color the petals should have, but I know these little things. In nature, many of these things are yellow. So I will give them a yellow color. And that immediately sets the tone for the, where the where the rest of the flower should go. Now this is a very prominent flower because it is almost in the center of the drawing. And there are three other flowers that look exactly the same. And I think I will start with a light orange color, the same that I used for the leaves over here. And I chose this color because um, I, can, I can change. I can go back to yellow from this color. I can go to red. I can also go to pinks. And the only thing, a purple, I can go to purple. The only color I cannot go to is, or I think I cannot go to, is to the blues. But I won't make this flower blue, because I want it to stand out from the background. So this is the dark chrome yellow again. And we, I will just add... The first layer again I am not covering all the paper on the petals just a slight touch here and there to see what it is doing sometimes you just have to test the color and I do that very often just Start with a very tiny area, and most of the time you can see uh, where things are going. Now let's take a step back and see. Now it looks a, a bit pale at this point, but this is going to be very good. I want in the end to make a connection between those large flowers and the warm orange tone in the left bottom corner and that orange will come back on other places so let's do this one too just a slight touch here and there And we need some yellow. I'm not very sure which yellow I used. 
but I think it was this one. The light cadmium yellow. So it's the same pigment as in the one I used for the petals. But they added something else to it. Don't ask me what. I really don't know. But it seems to be uh, the dark, the dark chrome and the light. Oh no, 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 it's another one. Look, the other the one, one is called chrome, and the other is cadmium. Okay, different pigments. So, this is it so far. I will do my homework and uh, color the other flowers here in the, this one and this one and some leaves and then uh, I hope we uh, I hope to uh, to meet you in the next episode bye bye so I did uh, this also while you were not watching and something very interesting is happening over here and I want to show you that While blending this orange with this um, brown ochre, I also added a little bit of ochre on top of this greenish blue area. And this is what happened, and I really like this. So let's do that over here as well, so you can see what happens. So sometimes two colors that don't seem to match at all give very surprising results. So I'm doing this here too, look. This is an extremely light touch. I always use a light touch, but in this case it is extremely light and delicate. It's like coloring with a feather, this very soft feather, barely touching the paper.
Over here something interesting is happening. At first sight I have the urge to uh, color more of this area with this brown ochre to make the transition between this area and here more smoothly. But when I'm looking to the at the butterfly over here for some reason this barrier works for the butterfly. This could be like uh, a background and a background further away than this. So maybe this area, it could be plants, it could be a part of a hillside and behind the plants or the hill there is a pale blue sky. Could be something like that. So I will leave this like it is right now because this may be a very interesting part of the drawing. Now there is a thing I need to fix here. This is a little damaged, damaged area in the paper and that is always um, difficult to repair because the surface of the paper has been changed. It has been flattened out and that makes it um, take the pigment of the pencil a little bit diff different. So I will use a very light touch to see if I can add some color. Well, you can still see that there is something in the paper, but it looks much better already. So I did uh, this also while you were not watching. And something very interesting is happening over here and I want to show you that. While Blending this orange with this um, brown ochre, I also added a little bit of ochre on top of this greenish blue area. And this is what happened, and I really like this. So let's do that over here as well, so you can see what happens. So sometimes two colors that don't seem to match at all give very surprising results. So I'm doing this here too, look. This is an extremely light touch. I always use a light touch, but in this case it is extremely light and delicate. It's like coloring with a feather, this very soft feather, barely touching the paper.
Over here something interesting is happening. At first sight I have the urge to uh, color more of this area with this brown ochre to make the transition between this area and here more smoothly. But when I'm looking to the at the butterfly over here, for some reason this barrier works for the butterfly. This could be like uh, a background and a background further away than this. So maybe this area, it could be plants, it could be a part of a hillside and behind the plants or the hill there is a pale blue sky. It could be something like that. So I will leave this like it is right now because this may be a very interesting part of the drawing. Now there is a thing I need to fix here. This is a little damaged, damaged area in the paper and that is always um, difficult to repair because the surface of the paper has been changed. It has been flattened out and that makes it um, take the pigment of the pencil a little bit diff different. So I will use a very light touch to see if I can add some color. Well, you can still see that there is something in the paper, but it looks much better already.